So right now in our game, we're not able to interact with any of the surroundings. What we want to do is to be able to click on things and elicit some kind of reaction from the game. So say if I click on the door, the game will tell me the door is locked, we are in an escape the room game after all, and then I continue looking for clues, click on other things, discover more information about the setting. So the way we're going to do that, you can see that the background that we have loaded is a still image. Um, it doesn't consist of any parts, so the system by default doesn't really distinguish between the door and the window and the display there, because they're all part of the same image. We're going to have to tell it manually where the objects are and what it should do when we interact with them. Now the easiest way we're going to make that happen is by creating a new invisible object and positioning the invisible object over the object that we want the user to be able to interact with. And when the user click on a thing in the game, they think they're clicking directly on, say, the door or the window, but we know that underneath, um, or actually over that image, is this invisible thing they're clicking at, and by doing so, they elicit some kind of response from the game, which we um, tell the game to communicate to the player through the events section. So we're going to create a new object, and we're going to make it, let's say, a tiled sprite, and we're going to make uh, an object called clickable, so that we know. It's going to be the same object that we use for all the clickable things in the game that the game responds to, uh, but we're going to create a variable for the object that will tell the game what the different objects are. For now, we just need to load an image, so we're going to select an image, choose a new image, and the one we're going for is yellow. So it's a semi-transparent yellow image that I just chose so that it is easily visible to us, the game designer. Let's click Apply. And you can see now that we can just drag it here, resize it as needed. Let's try and create one for the door. And we can also rotate it. Wow, okay, this is overly sensitive. Something like that, I guess. Position it here. I know it's not perfect, but it covers most of the territory. And if the player wants to click on the very margins of an object, like about here, it's their fault that the game doesn't respond. Well, it's partly our fault, but we don't have time to fine-tune this right now. So we've created one clickable object, um, and we can create others for the window, the monitor, the, the surroundings, all the objects we want to be able to interact with, but how does the game distinguish between them? Well, I've already told you, we're using a variable for the game, that's exactly how the game is going to know. So if we click here under clickable, we can go to edit object variables, and we're going to create, click on the plus sign, create a new variable. So this is the memory of each of the clickable objects. We're going to call it name, and we're going to give it some kind of value to begin with. Um, I guess the value can be none or something like that. And I think you don't need quotes here. I'm not actually sure. Let's see if gdevelop accepts it. I think it does. So weirdly for string variables in this condition, you don't need quotation marks. So let's stick with that. One other thing we're going to do is we're going to click here again and make it a global object because we need these clickable things to be present on every scene in the game that involves some kind of player interaction. So we're going to set them as global objects. Remember, they're not actually on the external layout because we want them to be in different places um, every time, depending on the, the particular scene, the particular part of the room the player is looking at, unlike the UI, which stands in the same place. So, okay, we are good. Um, and if you see, we click on the door here, and you can see how we are now seeing the instance variable, so the name of that particular clickable object is none, and that's not the one we're looking for. Let's rename it into door. And let's create another one, and uh, this one will be positioned over the window. So about here. I guess like so. If you need to be more precise than that, you can actually adjust the shape a little bit with creating by creating a bunch of clickable objects with the same name. So I could create another rectangle here, let's say, if I wanted to. Actually, let's just do that. Let's create one here. 
that will also whoopsie represents a window okay something like that something like that actually I don't really like that one but let's hope it works it doesn't have to be perfect because again the user is more likely to be clicking on the central part of the image that is how games are normally played okay something like that anyway don't need to bother right now so we're going to rename the name change the name of this variable into window window and we're going to rename the other one into window as well and let's add another one let's add one for do you see the disturbing mcdonald's fries here on the desk i don't know what they're doing here but i cannot help looking at them let's create one right there for the for the fries um this one we're going to rename into fries okay or chips whichever you prefer um so now we have three clickable objects on the screen what we need to do first of all is to create a separate layer for them so we're going to go to the layers editor by clicking here and we're going to add a new layer and the layer is called click or something like that um, and it doesn't really matter where the layer is positioned because we're not actually going to be able to see it anyway so let's just keep it as it is and again we're going to select the four I'm holding shift we're going to select the four clickable things we have created and we're going to choose layer under properties and move it to click this layer now what we're going to do first of all is here we're going to go to the events sheet and at the beginning of the scene we're going to hide the layer called click so we're going to under layers and cameras select hide a layer and the name of the layer we're looking to hide is click okay so if we test the game now we can see that the the rectangles we created are gone right now nothing happens if we click on them but that's because we haven't told the game to do anything so that's the next step so if you remember how we did the clicking parts in the menu that's the same logic we're going to use here we're going to create a new event we're going to ask the game whether the mouse or the cursor of the mouse is on a particular object so the first action is cursor touching is on the object and the object we're looking for is clickable going to hit OK we're also going to check for not just the position of the cursor but were whether a mouse button was actually pressed so again we're going to mouse and touch and we are going to select if the mouse button was released and we're going to select left the left button because that's how players normally click so if the object is positioned over a particular sorry the cursor is positioned over an object and the player presses the left mouse button then we're going to display some form of text what text that is depends on whether where the player clicks so we're going to have to create sub conditions let's go here or sub events for the different types of objects so let's create a sub event and let's add a condition and we'll be checking for the instance variable so each each instance of the clickable object has a variable associated with it we're going to look up that variable and see what it stands for is it a door is it a window is it a desk is it something else and then depending on what the object is we're going to tell the game um, how to respond so this is a common condition for all the objects in gdevelop so we go to common variables the value of the object variable the object we're looking for is clickable the variable we're looking for is name thank you for the suggestion gdevelop um, it's equal to and let's start with the door right the basic starting point so we need quotes for this if the variable is ah sorry excuse me we chose the wrong condition here I went for value of an object variable confusing wording here uh, I should have gone for text of an object variable so if we're looking for a number then we select value if we're looking for text then that's where we choose text 
sensibly enough. So let's, uh, yeah, so like this one, text of an object variable, the object is clickable, the name is name, it's equal to door. So if the text of the clickable variable is door, then we're going to add an action and the action will be to change the text. So we're going to text object, modify the text. The text we're looking for is the text box object and we're going to set the text to, let's say the door is locked. I cannot get out unless I find the key. So that's how the player knows that this is an escape their own game. Okay, so let us actually test that and see what happens. So at the beginning, this is set to text. We'll get rid of, of the text um, at the start of the level later. If I click here, nothing happens. If I click here, you can see that the game tells me the door is locked. I cannot get out. Um, that's because it tried to start us touching the clickable object. It read the variable, the variable set door, and that is how it rolls. So we're going to create a few more um, copies of this sub event. We're going to create one for the window. So let's crush any hopes the player might have of escaping through the window by typing something like it's way too high to jump out the window. But we don't want it to be too pessimistic. Let's say, but the view is nice though. Button though, we don't need both. Okay, and one more for fries. What do we say then? Cold McDonald's fries. Gross. 